Okay, in this video we're checking out three different 4-in-1 32-bit ESCs. Um, this is going to be for your 30 by 30 size ESCs, not the micro size. It's going to be for your 5-inch class. There's... Uh, actually, I picked these three because they kind of have some different features. Obviously, different price points. So, you have the iFlight Success here. We have the Flycolor X-Cross and then the Racer Char Metal. Um, there's some features here in the back. So this one's a 50 amp, the iFlight, 2 to 6S, as you can see there on the back of the box. The fly color here is also 32 bits, and this one is 60 amps, it bursts to 70 amps, 3 to 6S, and this one comes with a 5 volt 3 amp BEC. And then we have the Racer Star Metal, this is also 32 bit, 60 amps, and it bursts to 70 amps. This one is 3 to 8S. Uh, no BEC on this one, and I believe all of these have current sensors, and um, I think this one has ESC telemetry and the other ones don't, but let's go ahead and open them all up. This one here I've already kind of taken apart, and I'll show you what you got in the box. You got the, this is the iFlight uh, uh, 50 amp EC. So I've actually flown the 60 amp version of this uh, that has the metal MOSFETs. This has the standard MOSFETs on here. And it pretty much looks the same as that. That one performs really well. I like that one a lot. And so if you get the EC, you uh, get an XD60 connector. You get some M3 screws. You get a wiring harness there that goes to this connector right here. And then you also get, um, in addition to the screws, you get some little standard M3 spacers there. They're in the box. And then this is the capacitor, it's, uh, it's 35 volts, 220 microfarad. It's a little low because it's supposed to be up to 6S, so should be something closer to 50 amps, but yeah, that's better. I guess it's better than nothing. Uh, there are additional filtering capacitors on the ECs itself, so possibly that could be enough to get rid of all of the noise. But here's a look at the EC itself. You got current sensor on the bottom. The connector here is not labeled. There's no solder pads on the for the motor leads on the bottom, but there is solder pads for the battery lead on the bottom, maybe for your uh, capacitor there. You have solder leads for the motor wires here up on top. So this is the back here, motor one, motor two, motor three, motor four. Okay, so I got the uh, connector plugged in here. This is the bare wire here. If you have another uh, a flight controller, you might have uh, a wiring loom that will come out with the same, um, I guess, order of wires, but if not, you'll have to rewire it. Of course, you can just do direct soldering as well. Now, this one here, the order of the wires, you can actually check it out on the product page, but just go over real quick for you. Here we have a ground here on the right. The red wire is VBAT, then the green, blue, yellow, and white is a motors one through four. There's the motor signal outputs. The black wire is the current sensor line, and then the red wire here is the ESC telemetry line. So this one does have ESC telemetry as well as a current sensor. So pretty nice little board here, and it's not too bad. It comes in at about $53, I believe, right now. And, uh, and for comparison price-wise, the Flycolor X-Cross is coming in, I think, around $66. And then the Racer Star is, like, around $69. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, fly color again. Uh, 60 amp, 4 and 1 EC, 32 bit EC, and this is 3 to 6S. And this has a 5 volt 3 amp regulator. And let's see what we got here in the box. Oh, we've got a pretty nice EC. This one has a heatsink on there, as you can see, pretty flashy looking. We have uh, solder pads that do stick out a bit more. Let's see, compare that to the high flight. And it does stick out a little bit more, so that does make uh, repairs uh, somewhat easier when the pads are sticking out a little bit more. So you have these on the top here, and then also pads on the bottom. And we have uh, these little grommets here, these little M3 grommets for vibration damping, although I'm not sure why you would need that for the ESC. And this one does have a, uh, some conformal coating on the bottom, as you can see, so usually this is going to be towards the bottom of your frame, so if there's any kind of water splashing or moisture, this usually will help a little bit. I don't think the iFlight has that. 
Yeah, so this is the top here, nothing there. And it doesn't look like there's any coating or anything on the bottom of the iFlight. Yeah, that's not too bad. I mean, you could always uh, put a little conformal coating on there yourself. It's not that hard to do. But this one does come with that. And this one comes with a lot of capacitors. A ton of filtering. I think that there is the switching voltage regulator. 5 volts, 3 amps. Got a current sensor there. And then this connector here, the micro connector, does have some labeling on there. So you have ground, ground, VBAT, 5 volts. Motor outputs 4, 3, 2, 1, current sensor and EEC telemetry. So this one also has current sensor and EEC telemetry. And it looks like this heatsink is glued on there, that white stuff there. So I'm not going to be popping that off. Let's see what else we got in here. We got the instructions. And got a bag of stuff here. So got a, another small capacitor here. 35 volt, 470 microfarads, so again, could be bigger, but again, this does have a ton of capacitors on the bottom there. Get a couple of different wiring looms, looks like a longer one and maybe a little bit shorter one there. So that's kind of nice, you have two, and then some, I think one of these has some, looks like some bare wires on, on here versus this one does not, so it's a little bit different, so possibly if we use uh, this for different kinds of flight controllers, and you do get some nylons, no, those are metal screws, sorry, these are, these look like metal screws, and some nylon nuts, and you get an XD60 connector, and, if that, and that's it for mounting, and that's it for the, what's in the box here, Let's see what we've got for the Racer Star, so again, this is uh, 60 amps as well, it bursts to 70, same as the fly collar, uh, but this one is 328S, so we have basically 2 to 6S for the iFlight, 2, sorry, 3 to 6S for the fly collar, and 3 to 8S. This is, I think, the first 8S 4 and 4 and 1 EC that I've seen. It does say it has an IP65 waterproof rating, that's pretty low, so uh, I think it just has conformal coating on the bottom. Maybe they've uh, tested this with a little bit of splashing of water, and that's probably what that is. And again, 60 amps bursting to 70. And let's see what else we got in the box here. We do have some connectors here. Let's look at that here. And then we have a small, looks like another small capacitor. So 35 volts, 470 microfarads. So definitely seeing a pattern there. And then we have the labeling for the connector that is right there, this connector here, this is a uh, motor 4, 3, 2, 1, you have a current sensor, VBAT, and ground, so there's no EC telemetry on this one, and let's see what we got here, so we got, again, uh, got your wiring harnesses there, you get some M3 spacers for mounting, and this one, no, this one comes with nylon screws for mounting, instead of metal, and then Looks like your wiring harness has some servo leads on the on one side. Uh, so yeah, I guess it's going to depend on what kind of flight controller you're using. You may need, I mean you may need to do some soldering if it doesn't exactly uh, match up to the order of wires here, as depicted in the diagram here. Now we have solder pads on the top. So it looks like that is yeah. This is the top. Oh, and by the way, this does come in, come in black as well for this heat sink instead of red if you prefer black. So there's motors 1, 2, 3, and 4. And you have your battery leads here. You have through holes there for the uh, capacitors. So that makes it a little bit easier to mount. Usually this micro connector is going to be on this side. For some reason it's over here. So I don't know. That's, it might get in the way. And so there's a little bit of space there. So I don't think it's going to be that bad. But let's just... Uh, just pull this out and let's see we have this kind of connector here with basically you know, either servo leads or you can probably cut those off and do direct soldering and this will I'll just plug in over here like so yeah, so when you put the connector all the way in and obviously you're going to want to run the wires up this way like this and then you could put your battery in here so it should be all right I mean should there, should, there shouldn't be any reason for it these wires to be touching each other, but yeah, that just it is odd that it's there instead of on the other side. That's where it normally would be. 
Uh, so that's probably something that people are going to complain about. Um, yes, yeah, so this one has a current sensor but no EC telemetry and it does go up to 8S. Okay, so let's just do a little weight comparison between these guys. So we have the racers are coming in at 22.5 grams and then the fly collar is coming in at 20.4, 20 20.4, 20 20.5 grams and then the eye flight, it's probably going to be the lightest, much lighter at 14.7 grams, so it's about a, almost a 10 gram, more than a 10 gram difference. And actually, sorry, so it's 20, 22 and a half for the racer star, so <laughs> my math is bad. And then yeah, 22 and a half, and then 14.7. So pretty pretty significant difference. Obviously, I think the, the weight's going to be in the metal heat sink, of course, and that's also why this is heavier. This one feels lighter than the Racer Star as well. We probably need the bigger heat sink because it's going up to 8S. I, I imagine that's probably why it's heavier. Okay, so that's going to do it for this video. We'll take a look at three different 32-bit ESCs. Obviously, slightly different features and different ratings. Obviously, 50 amps is going to be pretty much good enough for most applications, but if you want to go uh, to a higher amp rating with the nice heat sinks here, and I believe these two here have ESC telemetry and this one does not, so if you're looking for ESC telemetry, then you should go for these two. If you don't care about that, then this should be fine. If you want to go 8S, this is the only one that will go to 8S. And then I believe the only one that has the uh, on onboard voltage regulator is this guy here, so you can get 5 volts and 3 amps for extra whatever uh, peripherals you have on your drone. Uh, you can grab uh, uh, some extra voltage, 5 volts from the actually directly from the ESC instead of your flight controller or some separate BC because the BC is built into this ESC. Anyway guys, it's a quick look at these three 33 DCs. They're going to go into some various builds in the future so we'll see how they perform. Generally speaking, um, these usually, I guess, you know, not the bottom of the barrel type ECs tend to perform pretty well. Um, you know, if you if you if you want to go for like a, you know, scrape the bottom of the barrel and get a really cheap 32 BDC, like say mm, 35, maybe below 30 dollars somewhere there, I would be cautious about that. Uh, you don't know exactly where they're cutting corners. Uh, generally speaking, uh, 32 BDCs in this price range are going to generally work fairly well or pretty decently. I know that the the uh, 60 amp version of the iFlight that has the metal MOSFETs, that one I actually like a lot. I've been flying that one quite a bit on my uh, XL5 uh, unibody. I've, um, that video is also something that I, sent, I put out a, a couple months back, but that one I've been flying for a while and that one's worked pretty well. So I expect this one to also work pretty well. So um, not really too worried about uh, in terms of reliability. Of course, you know, how it'll hold up in crashes and that kind of thing, that I don't know. Um, that's you know, obviously going to have to wait for a long-term review down the road after I've put these into builds. But if you're wondering um, uh, about more information on this, they will go into builds eventually. I just don't know exactly when, so stay tuned to the channel, be subscribed, have your notifications turned on, and when these go into builds, you'll have an idea of how this will perform in those builds. So stay tuned for those videos. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.